Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Here's the News. But before I jump into that news, as we got, I think, five big stories for you today, including a really sick deal that if you're a Nintendo Switch owner, you might want to pay attention to. Uh, I gotta remind you that, hey, we are giving away a copy of Monster Hunter Rise, which we have some news on Monster Hunter Rise, so that's really cool. We're also giving away a $100 Nintendo Switch, PlayStation, or Xbox gift card. Also, two $20 Nintendo Switch, Xbox, or PlayStation gift cards. To enter, head down to the description. Uh, I wish all of you guys luck. It literally ends this week because the winner will be drawn on April 1st. So still some time to enter. Uh, let's just see uh, who ends up winning. All right, let's get into... Uh, the news and our first story is actually about Monster Hunter Rise. So you might have seen some headlines by now, but if not, they did ship four million units. Now these are just the physical sale units. We don't have any digital sales numbers per se, uh, but we uh, now know they shipped four million units on launch weekend over the first three days. This actually makes it the second largest launch for well. Capcom, uh, but also the second largest launch for Monster Hunter because Monster Hunter World shipped 5 million units during its launch, and that was on two systems. So 4 million shipped for just a single platform is an insane amount of units. But we have additional information beyond that because David Gibson came out and said, hey, 2 million of those shipments were just to Japan. And assuming that it sold out because right now, Physical copies are sold out in Japan. Uh, guess what? That's 2 million in sales just physically in Japan. That beats out Animal Crossing New Horizons launch that was at you know, 1.6, 1.7 million. That means that Monster Hunter Rise will be the biggest you know, launch game on Switch in the history of the platform in Japan for a platform that's already doing record numbers in Japan. That's insane. That's just Japan. It also turns out physical copies are sold out in China as well for, you know, the markets that do have it in China. Uh, and also physical copies are becoming extremely hard to find here in the United States as well. You can still find it, uh, uh, you know, at a few places. It's not like it's rare, but it definitely over the weekend became really hard to find a physical copy of the game. Hence, I ended up buying it digitally. Now, in addition to that, GameIndustry.biz gave us some details on the sales in the UK, and it is now the second largest launch for the Monster Hunter series in the UK, obviously trailing Monster Hunter World. And it seems a little bit rough at first, because the sales are 43%, you know, below the sales of World, which technically means that Nintendo Switch as a solo platform was able to sell 57% of the kind of sales that World could do on PlayStation 4 and Xbox combined. Kind of impressive in the end. But if you're worried about those sales being lower than World, which I don't know why you would because Capcom's the one making bank right now, uh, don't worry because uh, it's twice the sales of Monster Hunter 4. So... Yeah, when well, Monster Hunter 4 launched, it was one of the best launches in Monster Hunter history. It's twice that. So, yeah, a lot of analysts, including David Gibson, are projecting that, you know what, by year's end, this thing's clearly going to sell at least 8 million units. It might have sold 4 during launch, plus digital could have pushed it up to 5 or 6. So it might already hit it by this summer at some point, depending on, you know, where sales end up in week 2 and week 3. We don't really know uh, when sales are going to slow down significantly for this game. It's hard to predict. Dict uh, when that's going to happen. It is exclusive to Switch, and Switch exclusives tend to have a longer tail of sales. So while Animal Crossing blew up to 30 million worldwide, it's possible that this could end up, you know, crossing 10, maybe 12. Remember, Monster Hunter World is the best-selling Capcom game, let alone the best-selling Monster Hunter game, at 16.8 million. You include the Iceborne DLC in, it technically crosses 20. However, you know, you can argue that that's just, like, the same game, but DLC-wise, uh, like expansion pack-wise. So, yeah, it, it, it's crazy to me when you think that this game alone on Switch could sell at least, like, it seems like the bare minimum project projection is half the sales of Monster Hunter World on a single platform in Switch, and this isn't even counting the fact it's going to come to PC in 2022, so there's going to be like a second wind of sales next year, so this game is just doing incredibly well. Uh, I think we always knew it was going to do incredibly well, but what's even crazier is that it seems to also be really well received. It's not just 
oh, it's a Switch exclusive, so it's going to sell well. It's not just because it's coming off of, off of Monster Hunter World. It's also legitimately a good game. There are a lot of people, myself included a little bit, that weren't really big fans of Monster Hunter that have been trying this game out and coming to realize it's actually really, really good. It's a very good entry point for new players, and its gameplay mechanics are fun and engaging and uh you know, while there's actually technically more complexities than, say, in Monster Hunter 4, uh, it's brought to you in a way that makes a lot more sense to the player rather than prior Monster Hunter games, you know, kind of, you had to get good. Uh, unless you were a veteran, it, it was really hard to get into it. World kind of opened things up more uh, in a different sort of gameplay style. Sort of different gameplay style. And here we have Monster Hunter Rise kind of taking notes from World and be like, hey, let's go back to that traditional Monster Hunter gameplay, but let's actually make it more user-friendly. And they did that. And this game is blowing up. They have a major content patch coming uh, starting at the end of April. And then a month after that, they're adding a new dragon and all that. It, it, it's going to be great. Um, Monster Hunter Rise, more power to you. Good job, Capcom. Not just for making a good game, but having a successful launch. I can't wait to see uh, what the actual sales figures are going to be uh, when you get to the end of the next fiscal quarter. So then Capcom can tell us, hey, this is what this thing really sold just on Switch. Incredible. The game runs really well. It looks really good. It clearly was made for Switch first, PC version second. Uh, so sorry, PC users, if you feel a little bit like... The game's held back a bit, you know, graphically or whatever. But I'm telling you right now, gameplay-wise, this game is great. So the second story is about golf. Now, I actually like to play golf in real life. Fun story. I don't know how many people actually know that I play golf in real life. Uh, I don't I don't play it as often as I used to since I've had children. But I still like to get out there uh, for a few rounds every single year. I'd like to go out a bit more often. Uh, maybe I will this summer. We'll see. Uh, but right now, we're talking about golf because... EA and the PGA Tour have announced a partnership, a long-term partnership. And they didn't really give specific details on how long that partnership is. They just said long-term. So I don't know, is it 10 years? Is it five years? I don't know what they consider to be a long-term. Uh, but it's an it's a exclusivity partnership uh, where they will be making PGA Tour games. And this is very interesting because 2K recently bought the studio that was making PGA Tour games. You know, 2K21 PGA Tour used to be called Tiger Woods. What's also interesting is that 2K signed a new deal with Tiger Woods, maybe because they knew this deal was in the works where they were going to lose the PGA Tour license. Now, the big thing that's included in the PGA Tour license is the PGA Tour Championship and the FedEx Cup. Um, now, these are obviously big events in the golf world for those who don't know, but they're not as well known as, say, the four majors. You know, when you hear the, the Masters, some of you guys have probably heard of that. Uh, the U.S. Open, some of you guys have heard of that. So there are bigger events out there that aren't necessarily exclusive in this deal because the PGA Tour company doesn't own these events. So it's possible that 2K is going to have their Tiger Woods Golf because they're clearly going to put Tiger Woods back on the cover uh, and you know because they can't be using the PGA Tour name. The PGA Tour branding is going to go over to EA, which, again, this could create brand confusion in the marketplace for people who don't pay attention because if you bought 2K21 PGA Tour and all of a sudden the next PGA Tour is by EA, you might assume it's the same game, but it's not. Uh, and then, obviously, uh, the majors could end up in both games. Uh, there's no real reason they can't be. There's no exclusivity deals in place right now with the majors. So uh, they could both end up being really viable games. It is kind of strange to see PGA Tour being made by a 2K company now going over to EA. But yeah, both are going to continue to make golf games. Uh, it's going to be interesting. It could crash and burn. Uh, NBA Live, when they brought that back, despite actually making some great progress, didn't exactly ever catch on. Uh, not in the way 2K did. Maybe if NBA Live never went away in the first place, it might have had a better chance of staying relevant, but it vanished for a while. Um, just like uh, you know, MLB 2K. You guys remember uh, the 2K baseball game? It used to actually be a really, really good baseball game, and then MLB The Show came in and just did everything better, uh, and then 2K just eventually gave up, which kind of sucks because now if like it comes back, well, it's going to be fighting a, a big uphill battle. But MLB The Show has at least gone multi-platform. I mean, it's not really exclusive. Um, you know, RBI Baseball, you know, has, has the, the stadiums, the teams, the players, the likenesses, the coaches. So, anyways, it is what it is. Um, good luck to EA. Good luck to 2K. Uh, it, it's always nice to see competition with games anyways because uh, that typically breeds excellence from at least one of the companies. And I think most of us think it'll be 2K. But hey, you never know. Maybe EA is exactly what golf fans needed. Maybe.
It's hard to give EA credit for anything. Oh, by the way, curiously, they're 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 trying to advertise this as a next gen golf game. You know, using the Frostbite engine, the same engine that they were using on last gen. Yeah, I, marketing speak is fun. Our next story is just a brief one on Cyberpunk 2077. Yes, the game that is still to this day not back on the PlayStation Store. Yeah, guys, we're like, what, five, six months out from when the game launched? It's still not back on PlayStation Store? Ouch. Like, they really messed up with this game. I, I, I almost feel bad for CD Projekt Red how bad they messed up, but they did this to themselves, especially the higher-ups. Uh, so today they announced a patch that is coming soon to both console and PC, uh, patch 1.2, and I would love to cover everything in this patch, but it would take its own 30-minute video just to get through the patch notes. I'm not kidding. Take a look. This is the longest patch notes I have seen in the history of video games. I'm not even kidding. It, it just keeps going and going and going and going, clearly showing how fundamentally broken cyberpunk is at every level on all platforms, both visually, quest-wise, uh, performance-wise, uh, AI-wise. Everything about cyberpunk is basically rushed out the door and not fundamentally working as intended. Um this patch maybe makes the game good. I don't know. There's so much being patched and fixed. I'm not really sure if this makes the game good. We'll have to find out when the patch hits. Maybe it might be finally time to say the game's good after this patch. I, I don't know. This seems like a pretty fundamental patch with how much is being fixed. I am just, it is what it is. I don't really know what else to say other than let's just hope that this is the patch the game needed because as it stands, Cyberpunk is still pretty much a broken mess, especially on Xbox and PlayStation 4. But just in general, AI-wise, quest-wise, there's a lot of things that just don't work that well. Cyberpunk is kind of a bad game. But maybe, just maybe, there's enough there to be fixed and patched over time. Kind of like with Sea of Thieves, that it could end up eventually becoming a great game. So, we'll see. Sea of Thieves turned it around, so maybe Cyberpunk can as well. We'll see. So our next story is uh, kind of an update on a rumor that's been floating on, around there about the PlayStation 3, PSP, and PS Vita losing its digital games. There have been a, a rumor floating out there that we didn't really talk about, about how uh, these digital stores are going away. And this has obviously made people uh, deathly afraid of a future that is all digital. Uh, we did a video on that previously, and we touched upon this rumor, uh, but now we actually have some evidence behind the rumor. So last year, technically, Sony removed access publicly on their official store website to PlayStation 3, PSP, and Vita. So th there's a web store you can access, um, and they removed the public access, but technically the web store wasn't actually taken down. If you had direct region links, so the direct US link, the direct UK link, the direct Australia, Japan, whatever, uh, you could still access the web stores and buy games and, and tell your systems to download games and all that. So the web stores just existed still. They just removed, uh, the, they basically just stopped advertising the systems is what happened on the web store. Uh, so it was, it, people were fine with that for the most part because it's like, look, hey, at least the web store still exists. And if the web store exists, that means the storefronts on the systems themselves still exist and you can still download your games, still buy games, all that jazz. Well... Those web stores have now been nuked. You cannot access the web store anymore. Now, no, the online servers are not nuked for these platforms. You can still access the stores on the platforms, but the rumor was in the next few months, access to those stores would be removed and the stores would close down. Seeing the web store go down is kind of the first domino. Really, last year when they removed it off the website, but now that the web store is actually gone and actually nuked, um, from uh, browsers, that's really the first domino to fall to kind of confirm that, yeah, Sony is going to end all of this. Now, there has been other rumors floating out there that Sony has some plans, uh, potentially for PlayStation 3 specifically. I think if you're a Vita or PSP owner, you're just kind of boned. Um, sorry, that's just 
is it is what it is. I don't think Sony really cares that much about you, and that sucks. But if you're a PlayStation 3 fan, and you really enjoy that PlayStation 3 library, and you're worried about losing it, it does look like Sony is attempting, at least, to try to add PlayStation 3 backwards compatibility to a PlayStation 5. Now, if you're a physical owner, that's great news, because it means a lot of at least the I would say exclusive games anyways, should eventually be playable on PlayStation 5, assuming that Sony is truly working on this. We have heard this from some reputable sources that, yeah, Sony is actually trying to get PlayStation 3 games to run, which is very difficult to do, of course, because that cell architecture they used, you know, that cell processor and all that they used on PlayStation 3, not very friendly with modern technology. But if they can find a way, you know, whether it's emulation or, or, or whatever, because the current systems are so powerful, it's possible they could emulate the, you know, the, you know, basically run emulators for the games. Uh, it's possible then that they could include backwards compatibility. So that is something Sony is looking into, and that would be maybe why that you know if they announce, hey, the store is closing, but you can bring your PlayStation 3 library over to PlayStation 5. That would be a rather big announcement, and maybe alleviate some of those all digital future concerns. Now the thing is. That's great for physical if you could stick the disc in and install, but what about digital? Now, in my humble opinion, if they are looking to bring PlayStation 3 games over to PlayStation 5, they would just make those PlayStation 3 games downloadable through the current store. So I, I honestly think they would just patch those games into the store as they become compatible. Because I think there's going to be minor patches or, or minor tweaks to an emulator or whatever they use uh, to get the games to run on PlayStation 5. So I think... Despite the fact that this is kind of shitty news, there's sort of a bright light at the end of the tunnel that potentially Sony isn't going to fully shut down those stores until, until they actually add PlayStation 3 backwards compatibility because there is actually a massive feature you know, difference between PlayStation and Xbox right now. Xbox Series X has backwards compatibility for some games going all the way back to the original Xbox. PlayStation 5 just has PlayStation 4. Now, that's huge to have, but, hey, like, what about the rest of your ancient library? Do we really have to pay a subscription fee to access some of those games? Because, after all, not all those games are on your subscription service. We'll have to wait and see. But, uh, for now, it's kind of scary, but also there's hope. So, go whichever way you like. So, our last story is about a sale happening on Amazon. So uh, if you're a Switch owner, and like me, I have a 512 uh, gigabyte uh, micro SD card, but you're looking to maybe upgrade because, A, you're filling it up, you're ready uh, for something bigger. Well, the one terabyte cards are now the cheapest they have ever been. So the SanDisk XC Ultra micro cards are on sale right now for $139.99. So basically $140. Bucks. This is the cheapest these cards have ever been, and that's because it is the deal of the day on Amazon. So really, you got to take advantage of that today. Uh, probably gone tomorrow because it's you know deal of the day, not deal of the week. Now these have dropped to 180 in the past, uh, but this is the cheapest they have ever been, and I would argue that it starts to become pretty affordable to just buy one terabyte of storage so we're going to include an affiliate link down in the description uh, for you guys to buy that uh, also they do have like the faster version of it as well on sale uh, but that's for 180 and i gotta say having played around with the faster micro sd cards versus the slower micro sd cards on the switch there really isn't a load time difference um, that's noticeable because i don't think the controller on switch uh really cares which one you use so yeah just just get the just get the cheaper one it's still a really high quality card. You're still going to get good speeds out of it. You're still not going to notice, you know, any much difference from that versus the internal storage. So enjoy. Get your one terabyte of storage if you need it. Because some of us have had Switch for four plus years and definitely are filling up those cards. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Robojet from Nintendo Prime. What an exciting batch of stuff we had for you today. Uh, I hope that you really enjoy. Here's the news. I know last week, uh, last week was a bit rough for videos. Uh, let's just be honest. I obviously was not um, feeling all of myself. Now last week was technically my spring break, so I'm, you know, I'm back in college as of this week. So it's kind of funny that as my life gets busier, suddenly I'm more inspired to do YouTube work, but maybe that's because YouTube is kind of a respite from everyday life, and when everyday life was easier, I didn't need that respite. I have no idea. I can't explain it. I really was in a weird state of mind. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, you'd probably notice that I was, you know, I don't want to say tweeting strange things, but kind of, you know, conversing and, and responding and, and, and tweeting things uh, 
about stuff that normally I just wouldn't tweet about, you know, even if I have a personal opinion on it. And maybe some of that's what got me down. Sometimes, you know, social media can have a negative impact on you mentally. But I don't really think it was that. I think that was more a symptom of the grandeur my mind's not in the right place. But I feel great today. I'm back. I got I got my Zelda sweatshirt on that I haven't worn in ages. I uh, love this bad boy. If I can find it online, maybe I'll link you guys to be able to buy it for yourself down below if you want, you know, if you're interested in that. I don't know if I can find it. I've had this thing for a while. So, anyways, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, I have a lot of fun making these, these episodes, I swear, man. They're one of my favorite things I do on the channel. So, look forward to more of them. Also, I have another video coming later today. And hey, by the way, if you check out NintendoPrime.com, I post a lot of the Nintendo news uh, before I even make videos or news I don't even cover in videos right there on uh, that website. Also, I've been writing some original editorial work that, yes, all my original editorials on that website will eventually become videos. Uh, but basically, a lot of my discussion slash editorial videos are going to end up over there on the website as written work before they get turned into a video because it takes obviously a lot more effort um, and editing and stuff to get it turned into a video. So if you want early access basically to some of the videos that you might see here, hey, check out the website at nintendoprime.com. All right, folks, I'll catch you guys in the next video.